my name is Ted Smith, and I'm the general manager of the International Hempology 101 Society. Um, this video here is the first of many videos where I'm going to review the textbook I wrote, Hempology 101, The History and Uses of Cannabis Sativa, which you can see you know, right here and uh, check out uh, online in various ways. Um, I brought an uh, old version of it here. Um, it is the fourth edition out now that is for sale. And uh, I go through a lot of historical uses of cannabis and we're going to make videos kind of breaking down the different uh, chapters slowly for everyone to digest as it were. If you want to read more about Hempology 101, check out hempology.ca. And so uh, today's topic is going to be some of the more ancient historical uses of hemp, the prehistory, as it were, of hemp. And I'm going to use a lot of information that I've gathered from other books. Um, certainly, um, this very well used <laughs> edition of uh, The Emperor Wears No Clothes by Jack Hare is uh, one of the sources. Uh, we have uh, Rowan Robinson's book, The Great Book of Hemp, as well. And uh, there's many other books that uh, I have used and a lot of information that's coming out on the internet and through other sources as well that uh, bring me to some of these conclusions. And so the history of cannabis as it were actually starts with the history of cannabinoids going back in fact approximately 500 million years ago. That is when the first cannabinoids as we understand them uh, became present in the world. And obviously that was long before there were uh, our species or anything like it on the planet. And it was among the earliest life forms at first cannabinoids, what we call now sea squirts. These organisms that developed a means to send um, messages from one cell to another, essentially using cannabinoids, much like the nervous system now uses cannabinoids to send messages back and forth. And these sea squirts develop nerves in order for them to feel around in the water in order to look for food, essentially, and avoid you know, danger and, you know, much like we use nerves today. And so it seems as though uh, cannabinoids developed uh, not only in these sea squirts, where they're still prevalent today, but in all vertebrae animals. And at some point, these sea squirts apparently you know, kind of split where some of them developed nervous systems and separated themselves from the earth and began to, you know, move around and develop limbs and, you know, bodies, uh, essentially, uh, where other plants used cannabinoids in order to develop their immune systems and grow on land. And so today, cannabinoids are present in sea squirts the cannabis plant and a few other plants and the human species and every other vertebrate animal on the planet. And while the uses of these cannabinoids isn't exactly similar amongst each species, um, there are certain similarities and, and correlations uh, that do exist from one species to the other. Um, but uh, these um, chemicals, these cannabinoids, are something that I'll be talking about a lot, uh, certainly more uh, later on in the medical chapter. So I don't want to get into the, the chemistry of cannabinoids and, and how they work, but I think it's important to note that uh, we, you know, basically developed from, you know, the earliest of, of our uh, species, you know, using these, these cannabinoids. Um, however, um, there was a, a split, and so, the, you know, the squeeze, sea squirts stayed in the ocean, and we crawled on, onto land, and the cannabis plants um, that we now call cannabis plants, you know, grew and developed uh, on their own. Um, and so, it's hard for us to know exactly, you know, when the human species and cannabis plants and their kind of natural environment came into contact with each other. Uh, it's uh, fun to, to speculate, um, but in my opinion and many others, 
it goes back you know millions of, of years um, it's quite likely that um, there was a, again a, a split um, that uh, uh, as we we developed um, into uh, you know kind of pre humanoids as it were that there was likely a point where we found and collected the seeds from the hemp plant that would have been the first and earliest use uh, in my opinion of cannabis as early animals we would have chewed every plant out there we would have pulled up its root to see you know what was growing underneath to see if that was edible um, we would have um, tried every seed and nut as well and very early on in our development we would have learned how to store these things as well it would have been really important to survive um, in times of either drought or you know environmental hardship um, to have stores of food it's not easy to store meat but it, if you do it properly it's quite easy to store um, different types of nuts and seeds and other vegetables especially if you're trying to live through ice ages and you know and so uh, it's something that uh, in in my opinion and many others the the first use of cannabis as it were by pre-humanoids would have been eating the seeds um, the leaf not so much the plant uh, has developed in such a way that it doesn't really taste that great um, you know I guess uh, horses and, and cows don't mind it too much but uh, for humans and, and most other species um, it's just not very tasty that's probably a defense mechanism the plant developed after time because otherwise it would have just been devoured you know it's so uh, um, proliferous at growing that uh, it would have just been been mowed down I think if it would have been really tasty to eat and so uh, um, but the fact is the seeds are not only you know somewhat tasty but very very nutritious and it would have helped us live through some very um, you know, rough time period so we would have been eating the seed for my opinion millions and millions of years um, and storing them you know we wouldn't have had to have brains much bigger than squirrels to start s storing seeds and so we would have been doing that for millions of years um, what would have started to change things is quite likely the capture of fire and the ability of pre-humans to use fire to heat their homes and uh, engage in, in other practices and so uh, many of us have these you know funny uh, thoughts of you know cavemen throwing bushes of cannabis on the fire and hot boxing small areas um, that probably in some sense did happen you know they would have again tried to, to burn everything around them uh, at, at certain points quite likely and uh, in some sense um, it, it would have been probably a very fragrant thing to do but in many ways it wouldn't have been what would we consider to be that the high that one might expect um, and in my opinion um, not only would the seeds have been the first use but quite likely the second use wouldn't have been so much for its intoxicating effects in, in fire but its use in building materials for homes to um, big make mats out of and so um, if you think of it and, and hopefully next time I'll remember to bring a I got a little hemp plant um, but uh, the hemp uh, when it grows together in, in a, a swamp like area it would have been very thick it would have been um, much like bamboo and you can imagine in the fall when when it died and the wind came it would have fell down and uh, it would have been very easy to pick up and weave into mats in my opinion the, the first um, mats and rugs and weaving that was done would have been very simply with hemp plants taken down and piled up in in the corner of, of a bed eventually you know woven together but uh, you know, what they would have also learned is that you need to really separate the fiber from the herds or what's called the, uh, the cork or pith in the middle of the plant a lot of plants you, you have the outside which is a long fiber and then the inside which is like a cork or a pith and so the fiber would have been really excellent um, to, to sleep on um, and what they would have wanted to do would have been to beat the plants 
to knock the cork out or the herds. And then this is what they would be left with, is a, a coarse kind of fiber. And so uh, this is, is, in my opinion, you know, what would have been some of the earliest uses of hemp would have been weaving it together uh, very gently to use uh, for mats and on the bottom of huts. And so that's a general introduction to some of the prehistorical uses of cannabis. Thank you for watching this video. We're going to be making many more kind of breaking down uh, some of the uses of hemp historically and today. And it's an exciting history. Um, if you want to learn and read a lot more, certainly my book, uh, Hempology 101, The History and Uses of Cannabis, uh, is a great resource. And uh, otherwise, you can go to hempology.ca, which is our main web page. Uh, we also have web pages for a newspaper I publish, the Cannabis Digest, and uh, if you want to check that out, uh, look that up. Um, otherwise, uh, um, I'm going to get back to my work as General Manager of the International Hempology 101 Society, and uh, we'll see you back here uh, very soon. Thank you very much, and have a great day.